Here are the highlights in the sport of sailing in the last seven days. This is the 12th year, we have produced a weekly highlight show of the best sailing videos from all over the world. We film, distribute, and work with sailing content producers globally, and we have hundreds of hours of top quality sailing content on our YouTube channel, which has 27,500 subscribers. We are viewer funded, so if you would like to support us, then we have PayPal, Patreon, and website joining opportunities. We started this week's show looking back at 2021 from the perspective of world sailing. And what a year it was. And 2022 looks good also, as, starting tomorrow, is the ROC Transatlantic Race. From Lanzarote to Grenada. The fleet is led by Comanche and Power Play. It's a strong fleet of 30 entries. The grand finale of the Youth Foiling Gold Cup ended, with the Young Azura team finishing in fourth place in the general classification. This last event concludes the Young Azura Sports Program, launched in 2020 by the yacht club Costa Smeralda, with the aim of forming an Italian team to participate in the Youth Americas Cup in Auckland. What an amazing final day of action at the Tarifa, Wing Pro 2021, where 15-year-old Riccardo Zorzi stormed up the ladder to win the surf freestyle discipline. On the racing side, Mathis Gaio and Olivia Piana showed amazing focus and speed to win. Team Childhood is a Swedish-Dutch joint venture sailing program which draws attention to the World Childhood Foundation. 
The aim of the campaign is to offer young sailors the opportunity to learn and improve. Here is a wrap of their activities during 2021. Harry Price's talent was obvious before he came into the 18s this season as skipper for the long-term sponsor, Rag and Famish Hotel, but it's still hard not to be surprised by just how quickly the level of his, and his team's ability, has been highlighted under very difficult conditions. Of course the happiest sailor in Australia was Matt Allen, who had his protest for time redress against Celestial, the winner on a lapse time of the Rolex Sydney Hobart yacht race, upheld. He then was elevated into first and gained his third win in his yacht Ichiban. Now over to the ROC Transatlantic race. The record ROC fleet is in Puerto Calero and Marina Lanzarote, and crews are making final preparations for the 3,000-mile race. Race navigators are studying the latest weather models, and the data is predicting a fast, potentially record-breaking race to Camper and Nicholson's, Port Louis Marina in Grenada. Four days before the start of the ROC transatlantic race, three top navigators expressed their predictions. Organized by the Royal Ocean Racing Club, in association with the International Maxi Association and the Yacht Club de France. The eighth edition of the ROC transatlantic race will start from Lanzarote on Saturday, the 8th of January, 2022. The favorite for the IMA trophy is the 100-foot Maxi Comanche, skippered by Mitch Booth. Comanche is very capable of breaking the monohole race record, set by Pierluigi Loro Piana's Super Maxi, My Song, in 2018 of 10 days 5 hours 47 minutes and 11 seconds. Comanche's Australian navigator Will Oxley has racked up 300,000 ocean miles, including three editions of the Ocean Race. Will Oxley, Comanche, it is still too far out, but at the moment there's a suggestion that the southern route is not so good in terms of the trade winds. A couple of low-pressure systems are disrupting the Atlantic, so possibly a more northern route will be quicker. Around start time, we should get away in good pressure, but there's a big low building up off Nova Scotia, and it's moving very fast. So, when we get closer to the race start, factors like sea state will influence our decisions. Potentially Comanche will rotate up into the front, which will be windy and unpleasant. Comanche is a big strong boat and after negotiating the front we can reach away and tackle the next high pressure. Alternatively, if Comanche went to the southern route, there is potential for very light winds. Comanche is a big flat-bottomed boat, it is difficult to get to our polar speed in light conditions, especially upwind. British navigator Miles Seddon will be racing for Peter Cunningham's team on Mod 70, Powerplay. Hot competition for multi-hole line honours will be Jason Carroll's Argo, Giovanni Soldini's Maserati and Antoine Robast's Ultim, Emotion 2. Seddon is no stranger to the race having been navigator on Mod 70, Fido Cubed, setting the multi-hole race record in 2015, of 5 days 22 hours 46 minutes and 3 seconds. Miles Seddon on Powerplay said, if this were a holiday brochure there would be no question, head south until the butter melts. At the moment the middle road doesn't appear to be an option due to light winds. Given a free rein, the routing software favors the northerly option for best pressure for the longest period of time, but when you start to dig into the wave direction and sea state, it is less appealing. Further along the northerly route the models develop a strong cold front pushing down from the north, with 30 to 40 knots winds forecasted, and temperatures in the low to mid-teens behind the front. It certainly has some warning bells attached to it at the moment. America's Cup and 52 Super Series navigator Marc Legesse is racing on German boat in 56, Black Pearl, with Stefan Jentsch at the helm. The crew are highly experienced with over 40 Atlantic races between them. Black Pearl is one of a trio of boat-in designs that are expected to have a rare and exceptional battle across the Atlantic. 
Maximilian Klink's Swiss boat in 52, Caro, David Collins's British boat in 52, Tala, and Black Pearl is a contest to savor. Mark Leges of Black Pearl said, the short answer right now is north, but two days ago it was south. Yesterday it was 50 50ths and now it's north. The situation is very fluid and changing daily. North will be punchy, uncomfortable, and cold. So, I am not too keen on that decision, he jokes. We are in a dogfight with Caro. She is very similar to Black Pearl in design, also with water ballast and sailed by a crack crew. Tala will be very well sailed too. On the water we are bigger and should have an advantage, however they rate very well. The same goes for Tala in terms of size and rating. To a large degree we will not let other boats influence us, but once we get out there and the race develops, the scenario may change that strategy. The caliber of the competition means that if they do something different, we will need to understand why. Assumere brevemente cosa è stato per noi Young Azzurra è difficile, Sono stati, abbiamo passato più di 100 giornate in acqua tutti insieme, abbiamo trovato tante sfaccettature di ogni manovra, eh, ma in ogni manovra bisognava essere elastici e avere un bel affettamento di gruppo. C'è da dire che abbiamo avuto periodi buoni in cui tutto girava bene e vincevamo tante prove al giorno, momenti difficili dove tutto sembrava rimare contro però siamo soddisfatti, abbiamo sicuramente sfruttato al massimo questa occasione e c'è da ringraziare assolutamente lo Yacht Club Plus Esmeralda e il suo staff e i suoi soci per l'entusiasmo che hanno messo in questa campagna. Young Azzurra ha rappresentato per me l'occasione che cercavo, un progetto ad alto profilo che mi ha permesso di avvicinarmi sia al mondo del foiling che al mondo del presente e futuro e sia al mondo dei velisti professionisti. Vorrei ringraziare di cuore lo Yacht Club Costa Smeralda non solo per aver reso possibile il progetto e per averlo sviluppato nel migliore dei modi ma soprattutto per esserci stati vicino con dedizione e supporto davvero in ogni occasione sia in acqua che a terra. Sicuramente questo progetto mi ha, mi ha regalato tanto e ne farò tesoro per il futuro. Per me il progetto Young Azzurra è stata sicuramente un'ottima opportunità di crescita sia a livello personale che a livello sportivo in quanto abbiamo trascorso un anno e mezzo circa su barche foil e si sa che ormai le barche foil sono il futuro della vela e quindi ci ha dato la possibilità, l'opportunità di eh, navigare sul, sul futuro e sono molto contento per questo, ringrazio lo Yacht Club Costa Smeralda per questa opportunità e sono sicuro che è un grande trampolino di lancio verso, verso il mio futuro atleta e magari perché no verso una possibile partecipazione alla Coppa America. Per me il progetto Young Azzurra è stata una rinascita sportiva, ringrazio quindi in primis il Yacht Club Costa Smeralda per avermi dato questa opportunità di crescita sia sportiva che umana. Ringrazio tutto il mio team, Ettore, Fede e Franci per aver condiviso con me questo progetto. Continuiamo a guardare al futuro.
Welcome back everybody. Fourth day of competition here in Tarifa and we started off early. We had that beautiful sunrise coming off across the coast and we could see the Levante starting to come in. It started to flicker, it started to filter through and built throughout the day and we were able to complete the men's freestyle. The highlight definitely has to be that we have a new world champion. Congratulations from New Caledonia, Tituan Galea. Then Tituan unfortunately got kicked out a little bit earlier than expected against Bows Muller. These boys are always battling it out in between each other. There was a fight out there, but Bows Muller landed a couple of sevens and he was able to get the win. Then we also saw Julian Salmon from Germany up against Maxime Chablot. Both of these boys were fighting it out. We saw the style and the flips from Maxime Chablot. Julian mixing it up with some of the blind maneuvers, but in the end it was the Swissman, Maxime Chablot, claiming that third position. Now it's time to move over to the grand finale. It was in between Mr. Muller and Ricardo Zorzi. These guys have been throwing down throughout the whole competition. They have the fire, the fuego, as we would say down here in Spain. They had the multiple moves, we saw the spins, we saw the turns, quality versus quantity, we saw the style, but in the end it was the youngster from Italy, Riccardo Zorzi, was just going that bit higher, starting to set the bar high for 2022, and he is gonna be claiming the championship here in Turin. Wow, guys and girls, it looks like the wind is still here. The Levante is kicking in. It's getting even stronger. It's time to Speedy Gonzalez across the course and bolt light lightning because we're going to be starting with the race. We were able to get through two elimination of the women's race and one elimination on the men's side. It was fast, there was turns, there was calves, and they were going Speedy Gonzalez across the waters. But there were only two riders. We had the winner on the men's side, Matis Gio, and the women's side, we have Olivia Piana. Wow, what can I say? What better place to finish off the GWA Wing Falling World Tour than the beautiful location of Tarifa? We've had the spins, the turn, the speed and the calves. It's been great, it's been cool. We've seen the vibes and we've seen the things down here on the south coast of Spain. Look forward to seeing you guys next year. 2022 is going to be bigger and better.
uh, that leads uh, Scipio, Cass, Ismene and Merle, they, they, they did it, you know, they were ready and the pressure was high, but they delivered and so, so proud on their development as, as athletes, but definitely as well as a, as a person. They grew so much this last year, very impressive and uh, thanks to all that energy everybody put in, uh, you know, we had a group of 28 sponsors, they put a lot of energy in and we had a great contact with them, They're, you know, it's a family, we're now friends, uh, a big group of friends and, and uh, the management, they did amazing job with Dutch Sales Sailing Holland and the clubs, uh, Muiden and the Maas, they did an amazing job and together with all the perspectives, uh, and the glue between it and the good communication, it's a process to be very happy with and, and uh, very proud. Yeah, super. We are Team Dutch Hill. <laughs> and we are building the future of sailing in the hot. Okay, one minute to go. Now, I like that pin. I'd, you know, it, there's a bit of pin bias. Pete, you're, yep. quite, you're quite right. I know if, he, if he gets it away there, he could nearly cross on port. It's a gutsy score, but 49 seconds to go. And Finport's now in row F again, Jimmy. Far left. Far left. Okay, well, that's... He's going to have to go for a port ender, isn't he? That's no sailing yeah, no, there. Uh, and, Pete, the breeze has gone left yeah. and softened. That's where I told him to go. You see, he's not getting there. there. Smart, spot on, brother. 30 seconds but to go. Have a look how soft it is. Yeah. Like, uh, two minutes ago, it was 14, and now it's... Lucky to be 8 or 10. 10. Lucky to be in double figures. Okay. okay, they're starting to wind up now. 20 seconds to go. So there's plenty of room down there for the notes. Yes. He's got plenty of... And Finport. Oh, he's going to have Finport. Oh, Finport's down there too. No starting to put the bow up. Here they come. Oh, they're going to get a big jump here. Is they're nearly clean? early. They're Six, nearly early. Yes, they are. No. Okay, they'll be oh. clean. Clear start. And no sailing got it. Finport down there as well at that leeward end of the pin end of the line. Shore and partners at the committee boat. But... Uh, Great start by Noakes and Finport. That was definitely the end. And away they go. The big beat up to Kirribilli. Shore and Partners tacked quickly off the, at the committee boat. He was stacked right up there and he's already can see how far behind he is and the shift to the left. That'd be a minute, a minute ahead after well, yeah. 30 seconds. So everyone trying to get quickly onto port. See how well Yan Du's done. He'll nearly cross this. He'll be in the first two or three, if he can hold his height on port. You can see coming around his bows, no sailing, just appearing on starboard. But Yandu will be, if not, Tech 2 coming through the middle as well. But more breeze rolling down here, Andrew, on the left-hand side of the course. But Noakes will cross Yandu. Yeah, no, Noakes has got a good 30 seconds up his sleeve. But He's working up the middle of the track. And Tech 2 was a little in the peloton off the line. They were on Finport. He's and still, still going in towards Bradley's head, the western side of Bradley's right. head. So looking for the right hander. Well, Finport also simplifying life. Less tax, less current, perhaps. More Christmas parties for Keegan. Yeah, whatever. But, you know, Noakes has done the conservative thing, in a sense. And we're just trying to find the uh, weather mark. Got that, Jimmy? Where have we got that? Right off the oh, right other point. Yep. Just where that ferry is. <coughs> The little still white a, ferry. Still a fair way to go up in. It's a lot of tricky sailing between here and the weather mark. But what we're seeing, that Noakes has dropped off it and it's come back into the left. And Finport and Smeg will come in front of Noakes. So it'll be now Smeg and Finport. Yandu's still hanging on. He's a little higher than these two. What's he going to do? He's going to hang on as long as he can on the Yandu. Oh, okay, they're still comfortable on Yandu, just... Oh, that's just not comfortable, no. not, not on Mike Kennedy's arms, that's for sure. They could just, might just get there, Yandu. No screaming up behind them. We get a shot on Noakes, they're at full wick, here they come. And Yandu will lay, I think. Yeah, it's fully no. airborne. Noakes and... Yeah, oh, won't have the drop. No, great job on 
both those. And, and Yandu's come right up into third. Well, he's third, but he's a lot closer now. He's only 30 or 40 metres astern of Finford and Smeg. They're the three leaders. He's in the yacht race. Absolutely. And has so, been all year. And so is Noakes. Well, again, this race has provided plenty of thrills and spills, as it has all year, the 80-footer racing. This is the fifth heat of the championship, state championship. The race today brought to you by the Kitchen Maker. And the race goes on. It's a rather stormy sky looking westward. There's the Barrawang Hotel, Simon Nern, in fifth spot. It's pretty comfortable there. You can see Yandu going round. He hasn't got much wind either. Noakes has still got the spinning a half up or half down, whichever way you want to look at it. Yeah, but there's six knots of wind. It's yeah, they're just bobbing up and down, Noakes. Yeah. And here comes Tech 2, screaming down. He's got a lot of water to make up. Smeg uh, leads. It's a game of it's a game of find the win now, Pete. Barrowang, Shore and Partners. So Noakes for the bit of a bit of an ordinary rounding and the shoot not in the bag of no. dust. Oh, look at Finport. He's just got nothing here at this lured mark. Yeah. And <sighs> the hot day and the windward shoreline. <laughs> and Barrowang, look at him rocketing down in a and a ripper. Finford and a drifter. He drifts, Burrowang slides in. Tech 2's got so much wind he can't lay the mark <laughs> with Spinnaker. Oh. Tech 2's come back pretty well though, haven't they, from being further back yeah, to fullback. Yeah, you've got to never write them out. And Shaw and Partners on screen. They're, they're comfortably third. And here's the, uh, oh, 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 there's a great spring at the weather mark. Noakes, bow down and gone. It wasn't a prank, it was a prank with the water. But there was Rang and Famish and Burrowang trying to get away here. And the Rang is okay. hung up on the, um, on the bell line. Oh, gee. He's okay, he's out. No, he's out. Okay. Burrowang was oh, just about to go. Burrowang, they're gone. Really good puff here. And, and Lazarus. Lazarus also just behind them. They're over. There's Noakes. That's Lazarus. And here comes Tech 2. They're around. We'll be around next. So somewhat by default, Laz uh, Tech 2's got themselves up to about fifth position. All these boats falling over in front of them. Well, very tough conditions. Quite extraordinary, really. Yeah, quite light again up here and off screen but looking down the bay it's about 25 knots in the middle of the bay there yeah. we're on tech two just getting around the weather mark up here at Kirribilli way see the white caps in the background but he's just got a bit of a soft spot where he is there's Lazarus capital partners getting themselves sorted out and in a moment you'll see poor old Noakes still up Capsized, not much breeze. You can see Tech 2 where he is, just waddling along. But he'll get a puff in a moment. And then he'll pass the Burrowang, who's still trying to get himself upright. Lazarus has got going. Yeah, and you Tech know. 2 now on a good puff. Lazarus oh, got in away. Lazarus still a bit yeah, wobbly. Sheeting back on, I think, now. Yep, good to go. Looking downwind, I don't think there's many boats up right, Peter. The rain no. and Famish is still up. Is there in the back of the shot? Yeah. And there's um, Tech 2 has got himself up to at least fourth. Oh, he's dicing with death here, though, Tech 2. There's the rag in the distance with the purple. Just coming up for an interview with a powerboat, Peter. Oh, another friendly powerboat. Oh. Smeg without the spinning in the background. I can't give you an update on Yandu. Oh. I haven't seen him in the no, distance. No, he's upside down, mate. There's two in the water just no
frame them up over near where the ferry is. Uh, take, so. two, take two, marvellous, really good. Risk avoidance, they're trying to find line. So we've got two so, base cap sides on Bradley's. It's, it's one of those Yandu. Yandu and notes, Pete. That's our Yandu and just me. Oh, and take two right at the limit here. So Shore and Partners is the one down off, oh, okay. so off Rose Bay partners. without a spinnaker up. And then you've got Rag and Famish. And then Tech 2's got himself to third. So both Smeg and Yandu have perished. Yep. Off uh, the Kentucky Fried Mark, Channel Marker and Bradley's head. They must have got something, a good squall down there. Well, have a look at Tech 2, Pete. How much wind have they got? Well, they've got plenty. Enough for everyone. So more coming too, but... You know, to see both Smeg and Yandu capsize, two of the best downhill skippers in the fleet, they really must hit something special. Wow, Tech this... 2 are going to drop early, eh? Okay. As you'll see, mate, there's plenty of sea state, despite the fact we think it's relatively smooth water. Relative doesn't help you. Well, wow, there's boats yeah. out over everywhere. Yeah. Looking up, we'd look at this breeze now. Yeah. So the rain squall eventuated, and probably not going to last long, but long enough to provide another dimension to well, the last bit of the race here. There's the rag. Shark Island. Bradley's head in the distance. So they're going to go up past that to the weather mark. And uh, there's plenty of rain over at Manly Way. There's a very grey cloud descending. And the yeah. breeze is up. So the rain cloud, which is driving what's happening on the racetrack, the breeze blowing out of the cloud like a little cell. Breeze a fair way right, Pete. Is yeah. Smeg on screen, back upright and, ru and running? If you're in the keelboat, number four jib and a reef would be good. But it's starting to fade, I think. It was really windy right. for a while there. Smeg. Fisher Pike Hills, Smeg. next one. Smeg, Jimmy. Fisher Pike, we haven't seen much of them, but they've probably stayed upright. And and the Smeg sort of comfortable through the job. There's Finport, Finport, who was the early leader. Oh my God. Smeg. Oh my God. There's Clark Island in the background. He's got about, uh, oh, not long to go, 100 metres. And uh, the fifth heat of the state championship belongs to Rag and Famish. Harry Price, Gus Williams and Harry Hall. Well done, boys. One of the longest sponsors of the 18s too, the Rag Absolutely, and Famish, the yeah. Caligaris family. Yep. Shout out to Pete Caligara, a long time supporter of the class. That's a nice easy run across the line. There we go. Fantastic effort, boys.